But first, to an update on a story we brought you earlier this month about the ABC's reporting of an Alice Springs Town Hall meeting. Let's have a quick recap. The meeting was shut down after 20 minutes by organisers after a couple of speeches because there was some protesting and, and some singing out. So the organisers said they wanted to uh, shut that down. People were leaving early and streaming out of that convention centre in Alice Springs. We spoke to some uh, who were quite emotional. Ru one resident who was non-Indigenous said the meeting was, quote, a disgusting display of white supremacy. But instead they want to take punitive approaches. They want to reward the landlords and it's just a total white supremacist fest in there and I'll tell you what the vibe it was scary. Now if you listen solely to ABC Current Affairs radio program AM that day you'd think it was a mass gathering of white supremacists not concerned citizens meeting to discuss the breakdown in law and order. Not surprisingly the complaints against the ABC were many and furious and this week ABC Ombudsman Fiona Cameron completed her investigation noting the report presented one critical perspective on the event that it was racist without identifying the range of other concerns and issues expressed by attendees. Now, Cameron also noted that the ABC had failed to ensure accuracy in not making reasonable efforts to ensure that material facts were accurately presented in context, specifically by reporting hundreds attended the meeting when numbers were in a fact around 2,000. And considering how public this scandal was and how damning the Ombudsman findings were, how do you think the ABC's editor-in-chief responded? How did that story get to air and who approved it? So, Senator, we're looking into that. Uh, I've asked the same question as well. I think it goes to, um, you know, we've got a good track record, particularly when it comes to radio current affairs. It, it is at odds with the normal standards that we would have um, within news, particularly in radio current affairs, as I say. So I've asked to find out. Can I just cut in here for a moment? Yep. Sorry, because I, it's a bit more difficult when I'm doing this remotely. I, I can't quite believe what you've just told me, that you don't know who approved it. I mean... No, I don't know who approved that it yet. the most basic question? And you are the editor-in-chief, aren't you? Uh, yes, Senator. Two weeks, and he allegedly doesn't know who approved that report. This man is the editor-in-chief. He's responsible for its news reporting and he has no idea how a report tarnishing an entire community as racists got to air. Even more disturbing is the fact that when the report first started being criticised, the ABC stood by its reporting. And when the editor-in-chief was asked why the ABC defended its work before even investigating the issue, he said this. Did you approve that statement being made publicly? Uh, no, I didn't, Senator. I didn't see that so, statement before it went out. But you're the Editor-in-Chief, aren't you? I don't see every statement before it goes out, Senator. Um, so so who, who drafted that statement and finalised it and who approved it? I'll confirm for your notice, Senator, but I imagine it's possibly uh, Sally Jackson in the comms team. Pro probably would it need to be approved by, again, the Director of News, Justin Stevens. And do you think that would have been approved by Mr Stevens? I don't know, I have to confirm that on notice for you, Senator, but I would expect, yes, it would have. So people at the ABC are releasing statements defending themselves and their work without even looping in the editor-in-chief. Does PR hack Sally Jackson run the ABC or does David Anderson? Whatever way they try to spin it, this is disastrous leadership and a failure of accountability after slandering an entire city. And somehow it actually got worse. Anderson at one point admitted the journalist who prepared the report never even made it into the meeting she claimed was filled with white supremacists. Ms Williams did try to get into the meeting, was, uh, was not, did try to get in but was not allowed into that meeting, was outside of the meeting while the meeting occurred and recorded those people leaving the meeting. We did have other ABC people inside the meeting from the Alice Springs team. So Ms Williams reporting on the meeting never attended the meeting? Reporting on the meeting with other information from the Alice Springs team, yes, as, as a combined report, but no, she did not attend the meeting. Well, this is the first time we've heard this, Mr Anderson, and it appears to me that the ABC has covered this fact up. You heard that correctly. 
As an incredulous Senator Henderson noted, this was the first time the ABC had disclosed the journalist Carly Williams had not been in the meeting. No wonder this was a dog's breakfast. And Anderson just kept digging himself a deeper hole. Why haven't you revealed this up until now? Well, S Senator, I, I, I didn't think it was relevant, given that Ms Williams... <laughs> ..given that Ms Williams filed a report for 7 o'clock news that night uh, that did have all the perspectives in it, uh, and so it's she... It's not relevant. I mean, Mr Anderson... If I had put that excuse up when I was a reporter at the ABC, I would have been hounded out of my job. I mean, you're saying this. You're saying I'm... it's not relevant she wasn't at the meeting, and yet she was there to cover the meeting, and you haven't disclosed that, for whatever reason, the reporter didn't actually attend the town meeting. I mean, this is an extraordinary revelation. David Anderson is so clearly not across his brief or what his staff are doing at the ABC that serious questions need to be asked about whether he is even fit to do the job. To appear before a Senate Estimates Committee two weeks after a major scandal with no answers shows his contempt for the taxpayers who finance this out-of-control organisation. Because in the absence of leadership right now, the lunatics are running the asylum. I'm joined this week by media writer from The Australian, Sophie Ellsworth, and YouTuber and commentator, Daisy Cousins. Daisy, why don't we start with you? What was your take on, on this scandal? Well, can I just say, uh, wasn't Senate Estimates fun this week? I, I just have to make comment on that. No, <laughs> normally, it can be so completely dry, but we had all this really fun stuff. Wow. And on the, on the scandal itself, well, let's just look at the facts here. The ABC used the report of a reporter meant to be reporting on a meeting who wasn't actually in the meeting because of some issue with parking and not only did they use her report they used it in a completely ideological way that smeared an entire town as racist jack not even a high school newspaper would do that that just shows such incompetence amongst amongst other things in my opinion it is completely ridiculous and as for her comments about white supremacy um it's important to note here that if you're looking at things through the prism of identity politics which in my, it appears to me this reporter was the term white supremacy is thrown around an awful lot nowadays and has been over the past five years when most people think white supremacists they think someone from the ku klux klan but when you're looking at it through kind of an abc lens really anything can be white supremacy if you talk about property damage from indigenous crime well, that's white supremacy. You know, talk about land, although it's white supremacy. If you suggest that crime and turmoil by Indigenous people is the fault of anyone other than white people and colonialism, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, white supremacy. So we see here not only total incompetence from the, AC, from the ABC in getting this reporting out, it is unashamedly ideological and steeped in identity politics, in my opinion, from this reporter. I mean, this is an absolute comedy of errors, Jack, and how fantastic that it all came tumbling out in Senate estimates this week. Yes, yeah, Sophie, it's, it's, it's quite heartbreaking for the community which has been dealing with all of these, these issues relating to law and order to have that reporting put out there and, and their reputations and their concerns slandered that way. Do you think that David Anderson's explanation sufficed? I did not, Jack. I was really quite surprised when he announced at Senate Estimates that he didn't actually know who was responsible for this problematic report going to air. I mean, he had weeks' notice that Senate Estimates was occurring. It wasn't like it was just uh, thrown on him the day before. And in the food chain at the ABC, surely they had editorial meetings over this to decipher what actually unfolded. I thought it was embarrassing for him because he couldn't explain how this disaster unfolded. Uh, the reporting from that town meeting was very concerning and also when we were told that the reporter was not inside the meeting now I can add to this Jack that at the time of this fallout I repeatedly asked the ABC was the reporter inside the meeting now the communications department would not answer that question directly I asked them simply 
yes or no? I could not get a straight answer for the life of me. This is where the ABC lets itself down. They are not uh, straightforward with the public and the public lose faith in them. And we should know what they're up to because we're footing a billion dollars in taxpayer funds for them every year. Yeah, well said, Sophie. Sally Jackson, who was named by David Anderson as maybe she sent out the statement without looping in the boss, she has a lot to answer for, and it's not good enough that she doesn't answer your, your questions, Sophie. That's her role. She's paid for by the taxpayer, so good work for you keeping, keeping up the pressure.